So I think now is a good time to set up our validation and then we can apply it to our sign up form. So remember we have our sign up form ready, but of course at the moment we can just hit this and it will actually create a user without having anything entered here. And of course we need to later look at things like checking if an email is already in the database. And for that we can set up custom rules. So the library that we're going to be using is respect validation. This is a really popular validation engine and it works really nicely and we can integrate it into slim very easily. So in this part, we're going to look at setting the validator up so we can actually use this on our sign up. And then we'll go on to look at things like the available email rule. So we'll create a rule for that. And of course, then look at displaying errors on the form and then also showing old output. So let's just imagine we submitted this form, but got the password a bit wrong or the email wasn't available. We might want to keep the name in there so the user doesn't have to keep entering it. So first things first, let's install this library. So we can just head over to our terminal and do a composer require on respect validation. And of course, we'll wait for that to download. Okay, so now that this is done, we have it available to use in our project, but how are we gonna do this in the nicest way possible? Well, essentially what we want to do is wrap this in our own class. So this means we can very easily use it from our controllers. So let's create a new folder called validation just inside of our app directory. And inside of here, let's create a new file. This will be a validator class. So we'll call this validator.php. So let's set up our namespacing. So it's app validation. And of course we have a class validator. So what is our aim here? Well, what we want to do is implement some kind of validate method, which will take in our request object. It will take in a list of rules, and then it will essentially just check if this failed. And then we can grab the errors from this as well. And this is actually really straightforward. So let's just go through doing this now. The first thing that we need to do is just pull in the respect validation library. So this is namespaced under respect validation validator, and we're going to call this respect. So inside of here, the first thing that we want to do is create a validate method. So into here, we're going to pass in the request. Remember, this is our slim request object, and this will allow us to grab the parameters from the current request. And we also want an array of rules as well. So we can even type in that to an array. So let's just for now do a var dump here and just say works. In fact, we can kill the page here as well. So over in our container, we need to bind this on. So let's just do this somewhere around here. So let's say container validator and we'll attach this to our container. So here we'll just pull in our container and here we'll just return a new app validation validator. Simple as that. So let's start to use this in our auth controller. So here, this is just about where we would want to use this. So we're going to say validation equals this validator validate. Of course, you can change the names of this if you want, if it helps you out writing this a little bit quicker. And here we're going to have an array of rules. So in my case, I need to validate email, name and password. They all need to be available or at least entered. And the email needs to not exist already in the database. So we'll handle that later. So we have email, name and password. So how do respect validation rules actually work? Well, they're a little bit different to what you may be used to, but they're not too bad. So what we want to do is at the top of here, just import our validator again. So use respect validation validator. I'm going to call this V just so it's a little bit easier to use. This is kind of a standard with this library. So for the email, then we're going to say V. And to do this, we'd say something like no white space and not empty. So this will just say, well, for the data that's provided for this form input, we want there to be no white space 
and we don't want this to be empty. So we want the same for all of these. We're just going to do this for now, just to keep things nice and simple. And then we can implement our custom rule for checking if our email is available. And of course, for the name as well, you might want this to be alpha. So let's just search for uh, some kind of alpha rule. And I think this one should work. We'll give it a go and see what we get back. So let's just say alpha. Okay, so now that we've got these rules in here, this is obviously going to be passed over to our validate method. So let's just check this out. And in fact, what we could do is just do a var dump on rules. That makes a little bit more sense. So let's submit this through. And you can see here we get an email, which is now a respect validation validator instance. And the same for the others as well. So this looks a little bit messy, but essentially we just have an array of rules that we can iterate through for each one of these, we'll check that each of these are in fact valid or rather they don't fail. So to do this, of course, all we need to do is just go and loop through them. So let's do this now. So for each rules as we want to pick up the index of these as well, and that's just the field name. So as rule. So now what we can do is we can assert that this does not fail. So we can assert that it's true and we can pass in the actual field because we have this in request. So now we can just say something like rule set name. I'm going to do this by setting the name of the field here. So this is just this just helps when we're pulling back the error messages. So we're just setting the name. Then we want to assert that this given this value that we're about to pass in makes this rule pass. So we know that this comes from the request, we say get param, and of course we just pass in the name of the field there. Now what we can also do, we'll see later that when we get the validation message back, we can do something like uc first. That will just give the uh, field name an uppercase first character, and that just helps to make it look a little bit more user friendly. So now how do we actually catch that something has failed? Well, we have something called a nested validation exception. So if we just search for that, nested validation exception. This is under here, and this will be thrown if something fails. So let's go and just pull the namespace in. So it's nested validation exception. Let's just use this nested validation exception. And now what we can do is wrap this in a try catch. So we just wrap this like this. We want to catch that nested validation exception and we'll call that E. And then in here, what we want to do is if this is thrown, it means that one of these rules failed when we assert it uh, for its truthiness. So in this case, we just want to append to an error list. We don't have an error list at the moment. So at the top of this, we can just set a property. So this is just going to be errors. So now we can say this errors and we can append on the exception and get messages. Now it's get messages because there might be more than one message for each field. Because of course it could be, uh, you know, two different rules could uh, be a problem. So we want to also pass the field in there so we can keep track. Now to, it's a good idea to just test this out and see what it looks like. So down here we can do a var dump on this errors just to see what we get and we can kill this. So let's try this out. Of course, if we submit this as it is, we're going to have errors. So if we submit and it's saying get error messages, so we'll just call this E. So we call this E here and it's E here. So let's refresh again and there we go. So we get the email. Email must not be empty. Remember this here is the name of the field, but we've just capitalized the first letter. And the name, name must be not empty. And name must only contain letters A to Z. Perfect. And password. Now let's just check because I think the alpha rule, I'm not sure if it takes into account white space. Let's just hit sign up and name name must not contain white space. So that's obviously wrong. So we can use this just to uh, get rid of the rules we don't need. So this should be fine now if we just refresh it. And there we go. Perfect. So the only two errors we're left with is the email, which must not be empty. And of course, the password, which must not be empty. Feel free to head over to the validation GitHub page, check out all of the available rules. You might have some very specific rules that you want to implement. Now, either way, 
Now that we've done this, we need a way to check here if this fails. And if it does fail, we of course want to redirect back to the sign up page. So here we've done the validation. This is all pretty straightforward. Now, all we want to do here is be able to chain this on. So we just want to return this. This will just return this current object. And then down here, we can implement a failed method. So failed, and of course, you can implement a passed method as well if you want. All this is going to do is it's going to check if the errors are not empty, like so. So now that we've done this and we've returned this here, what we can do is validation now contains or is an instance of this class. So, or this object. So now here we can just say if validation failed, we want to redirect back. And if we return that redirect, then this will never happen. So we know how to redirect already. We've seen this just here. So we can just pop this in here. And of course the path now is going to be auth.signup. So we just, if this validation fails, we're redirecting back. Simple as that. So this might seem a little confusing at first. If you've not worked with respect validation, that library, then this can be a little bit overwhelming. But all we're essentially doing is looping through our rules, checking if it fails, if it does fail, we're appending to our error messages. And then we have this to check how many error messages we have. So now if I hit submit or sign up, you can see we just redirected back. Otherwise, if I fill this in properly, despite the fact this email already exists, let's just test it out. You can see when I hit sign up, that goes ahead and signs me up. So we have our basic validation in place. But what about going and displaying the errors on the actual form because we're not displaying the errors, which is really unhelpful for anyone. So we're going to cover that in the next part.